Who here hates drawing hands as much as I do? Nobody hates drawing hands as much as I do because I really hate drawing hands. Yeah. I know, don't quit my day job, right? Hey, hey, party people. Today, I'm going to teach you the way I draw hands. I draw simplified hands for illustration work. So much like my feet, uh, how to draw feet video, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of what this muscle is called and how to draw every single one of these wrinkles because I don't care. I don't draw all these little wrinkles and I don't know what this is called and I don't draw every like knuckle wrinkle. I don't do any of that. My figures tend to be about yay tall at most. It's pretty rare that I get requested to do anything much bigger, which means on a figure this big, my hand is going to be about this. The whole hand is going to be the size of my thumbnail. And so I don't have room. Okay. And so I'm going to teach you guys simplified hands for figure illustration, fashion illustration work. So real quick before I start drawing, most of you usually ask me what I'm using. So I'm just using for today's exercise some tracing paper. This is Blick brand. I don't have a strong tracing paper preference for brands. I usually just get what's on sale. I'm using mechanical pencils. This is a Zebra 0.5. I think it has like HB lead in it, you know, basic sketching. And then this is a Uni Shalaku uh, mechanical pencil. I just bought this in Japan a couple of weeks ago that I'm still testing. I really like it because it weighs nothing. Okay. Sometimes I like a weighted pencil. Like this one is very heavy. It's weighted um, at the bottom. Sometimes I like that. Sometimes I like the super lightweight. So I'm testing this one. And this one has blue lead in it. This is also something, um, if you watch my latest Japan haul, I just got this. It's, um, I got a bunch of colors. I'm testing out the blue first. It's blue mechanical pencil lead. Okay. And I've been really liking it so far. That's pretty nice, right? Like I mentioned in my Japan haul, I have the whole set of pentels. The other ones, the oh no, Pilot Color Enos, but they have a thicker lead. This one is thinner, so I'm trying this out. I like it so far. And then my eraser is just my main eraser. This is a Pentel Click, and this is, you know, my favorite. This is the Tombow Mono Zero, very skinny tipped eraser for uh, detail work which I adore and I just got another one and refills in Japan. Seriously, I hate drawing hands. Oh my God, I hate it. But I'm gonna teach it to you anyway. Number one, step one, get visual references, okay? You're never gonna learn how to draw something well if you don't know what the actual thing looks like in real life. Go get pictures of hands. Step number two, get your other materials together. Step number three, get a piece of tracing paper and copy the gesture. So when I do figure drawing videos, I always mark the wrist with the ball, right? I always mark the entire width of the wrist, right? And then that's the center of the forearm. And when I gesture out hands, okay, I block out the wrist. Here's the direction of the knuckles, and here's the shape of the palm or the back of the hand, okay? I generally do an oval for this cushiony muscle in here that I don't know the name of. <laughs> and then that, okay? And then I draw a basic shape for this set of knuckles. So there's that. And then I divvy them up. There's four. It's going back in space, so they're not evenly spaced out. You see less of the pinky than you do the pointer finger. Do you see some of this? Okay, you're gonna see a little bit of that. 
So there's your basic gesture for your hand, okay? And then in later steps, when we fill out the body and add in your anatomy, okay, we're going to go in and there, you already know that's the width of the wrist because we already marked it. And then we're going to pull out this muscle in here and we're going to have the thumb. Now, this joint, this is the number one mistake, most common mistake I see in hand drawings, okay? The depth of this knuckle, the, where this sits on the hand, is not the same as this. This one goes very far low in your hand, like halfway down your palm, and this, these stop like way up here, okay? And I see way too many hands where this is like up here, or this is like way down here. No, these sit kind of in an arc in a row, and then this webbing, this the way that where the thumb connects the, to the hand, rest of the hand, is very, very low. So this is up here, and there's your thumb. And we're gonna put this in here, and we're going to put in kind of like the soft roundness of the knuckles. There's your wrist hand and we're going to put in these fingers and we're going to give it a nice soft anatomical feel so it doesn't look like little robot cylinders and there's your hand ta-da that wasn't so hard was it if you feel inclined to do so you can put in some fingernails I mean, that's really all you see, okay? I don't even bother with fingernails like 99.9994% of the time. Every once in a blue moon, I'll have a client who asks for nail polish and I'll just take a teeny tiny little brush and, cause you know, my hand drawings are like this big, right? And I'll just dab a little ding, ding. This process is the same no matter what your hand pose is. Again, here's, where's the wrist? You see that's, her little wrist bone there, so I'm gonna mark my wrist there. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that because that's the bone that's kind of sticking out. And there's the center of her forearm. And you know what? If you can't see details over under your tracing paper, just draw them out on your visual reference. Like that's where her knuckles are sitting, right? And that's gonna be the arc. And then that's where her other knuckles are sitting. So that's gonna be that second arc. And that's where her fingernails are. And that's your third arc, right? So we're gonna put that back, match up that wrist bone back up, okay? The angle of the arm. And then here, there's the width of the palm. Here's that arc, here's that second arc, here's that third arc. So your fingers are going like this and your fingers are going like this, okay? And you can see the spacing there, you know, she's spreading her fingers out a little bit, not as, as much as I just did, but, and so we're connecting these and we're changing the direction, right? Okay, it didn't go out that far. So we're gonna bring this back in here like that, right? The biggest space is here. Ta-da! There is her wrist. There's her palm. There's that meaty joint. There's the rest of her thumb. And then you see a little bit of this when you render it. This is all going to be in shadow. If I wanted to do this on a guy's hand, you know, give it a little bit more girth and accentuate the knuckles a bit more, not taper the fingers as much. I make the fingernails a little bit blunter 
you know, I make the fingertips a little bit more squared off and I add more girth overall. That's really the only difference between drawing women's hands and men's hands. There's the hand, okay? And that is the hand on the face, okay? Here's her head. And that's a relaxed, slightly curved hand, okay? So make sure that your entire hand fits in the size of the person's face, okay? Put your own hand up against your face and see how much space that takes up. And it doesn't matter if you have a really elongated 10 head figure or if you have a not elongated eight head figure because hands don't get elongated and heads don't get elongated. Remember all those elongation processes, heads stay the same size and hands stay the same size. I will make the hands like a hair longer on like an 11 head figure to kind of add to that whole graceful long finger thing. But heads do not get bigger, hands do not get bigger. I love a beautiful, graceful dancer's hand pose, but again, the process is identical. We have the wrist, we have the bulk of the hand, we have the cushiony part of the thumb, the rest of the thumb, and here's the direction of her hand like so. And you see a little bit of her middle finger back there, so I'm going to do that. And then her other three fingers are together. So you see all the middle finger and then you see the other two kind of just in shadow back there. And then you see this webbing and join. There's her beautiful wrist. There's the cushiony part of her thumb. Wrist, knuckle one, arc two. And then it's changing direction now, right? Because of perspective and it's how it's going around. And there's her hand. Do, 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 do. And yeah, I recommend that you get some visual references that are of larger size and draw them out kind of big like this and get in that habit and then try to draw smaller and smaller and smaller. This is the advice I give to uh, students who are having a hard time drawing really small faces. So, you know, we have our 10, 10 inch figures and so our heads end up being one inch tall and our faces are even smaller than an inch because, right, like the top part of your head is uh, hair. So you have these teeny tiny faces and you're like, I don't know how to draw the teeny tiny faces. Like, um, Here's what you do when you want to draw a teeny tiny little face. Number one, get a teeny tiny pencil. I recommend a 0.3 mechanical pencil size lead. Okay. Um, also, start by drawing heads that are about yay big. Okay. Not much bigger. You don't want to get in the habit of drawing really big and the different skill set required to draw bigger heads. But here is a head that's close in size to your fashion figure, but you're getting in the habit of drawing these smaller features. And then once you get some nice features going and understand how to draw in those shapes, you can get smaller and smaller and smaller. Same with the hands. This one is a weird hand. This is a pose that happens a lot in actual fashion poses, but on croquis, they tend to look a little bit weird. <laughs> it's one of those uh, photo uh, drawing translations that don't always work out. You know, the process is the same, but I'm gonna tell you, I don't use this pose often in my fashion work because it just doesn't always look right. So you see how it does look fairly accurate to the swipe, but you see how it's one of those things where it doesn't look really great. And you think like, oh, all I have to do is draw the thumb. This is going to be a super easy approach to drawing hands on my figure without hiding them behind her torso, right? Uh, not really. 
Like I find drawing hands like this, this like side three quarter kind of hanging on the side sort of thing, much easier to draw. Holding on to things, all you have to do is make sure you get the um, the handles in there. Okay, but again, the approach is exactly the same. There's that knuckle. His wrist is in here, and now you know why. I like to use visual references where they're as naked as possible. And then you don't really see those, okay? And then in there, you put in your bag straps. And here's the side view. Okay, his wrist is in here. You're gonna see the knuckles sit across like that. And you don't really see the thumb. Like sometimes you will, sometimes you'll see it stick out like that. Now pay attention when you make a fist, your thumb, if you see it so that you only see the tops of these knuckles, the thumb is gonna stick out past that when you're drawing. If you're gonna draw something more like this where it's a fist and you see some of this, you see how the top of the thumb kind of lines up with the knuckles when they're bent. When it's straight out, the thumb is going to be shorter, okay? Because it's about, like, just above this middle finger knuckle, right? So keep your, your thumb reference is really going to help you keep things anatomically correct. So when you have a fist like, like a loose fist like this, or a fist at this angle where you're holding a bag like this, you know, pay attention to your thumb length, and how it's gonna inform you of how anatomically correct that is. Nothing is different about any of these. You don't see her thumb at all. And notice the knuckle emphasis is really slight and it's more about line quality. You look at these, I kind of press a little bit harder on, to emphasize the knuckles, but it's not like I draw these giant knuckles that stick out past the finger, okay? It's really about a harder line quality and then softening that up. Harder line quality, softening that up. And again, you see a little bit of that softness in there, a little bit of that softness in there, but this side is pretty straight. It always makes me laugh when you have front few hands on a back few figure. <laughs> the pinky is going to face you. Sometimes the drawing is such that it looks like a front view, but make sure you put your thumb in shadow so that it recedes in the distance and then the pinky looks like it's pointing towards you. Okay, so it's very important in making your whole figure look like it's anatomically correct. So, again, here's our wrist, direction of the forearm. Here is, again, that bulk of the hand. Here is your thumb. And again, that's that first joint, and that's basically the second joint. And it looks an awful lot like the front view hand. I am aware. But here's the pinky. Okay, and getting that pinky in there and making sure that that is the really like the most prominent finger you see is going to help you uh, show that it's a back view of a fist. So there's our arm, there's our beautiful wrist bone, and there are your knuckles. And again, here's that. Also, can I pause to say I am really enjoying this blue lead, this blue lead in this pencil. I haven't tried any of the other colors yet, but so far the quality is just awesome sauce. I just realized that I don't have enough paper. Oh, where's my coffee? Oh my God. Let's try this again. Forearm, wrist, forearm, wrist, the cushion of the thumb. And there's your thumb. 
There's the back of your hand. There's that knuckle. This knuckle is actually the knuckle of the middle finger. Okay. You see that that's the top of the pinky. That's the bottom of the pinky. The pinky is so small. You're going to see other fingers over here and other fingers over here. So draw that. Draw this pinky in here. And it's small, but that's also, do you see this line? Okay, that's this, okay? You're seeing this is this, and you want that. You want to show that this is the that back cushion of your hand joining up with your pinky, and that's what's facing you. And then you can draw your other fingers. There's your ring finger, there's your middle finger, and then maybe you can see the pointer finger in here. Honestly though, when you are drawing hands this big, you're not even gonna see all those fingers. You're gonna see this. That's really what you end up seeing. Okay, so you just have to make sure that the pinky is really the prominent thing. That's what really signifies that it's a back view hand. You're going to see an anatomically, proportionately accurate size thumb. And then your other fingers can be a little bit vague, like they're just whatever. Get a good visual reference. Take some tracing paper. Block it off. Redraw putting in your anatomy and your beautiful line quality. Redraw again if you need to redraw for better line quality, better anatomy, and you keep practicing this process. And if you never get to a point where you're freehanding hands, you are not a failure at drawing. Because let me tell you, 90, I'm going to throw a, a random number out there. I vote that 98% of people who draw people whether it's for a hobby or it's their living, we'll say that hands are top, at the very least, top three most difficult things to draw. I promise you. Okay? So learn it. Make The very least you want to do is make sure that your hand drawings are just good enough that they're not distracting. Like when they're drawn really poorly, they're distracting. Okay, and you want people to focus on the clothing, right? So at the very least, just get your hands to a point where they are not distracting from the overall image. And then, of course, you know, the goal is to grow from there. But yeah, hands are hard. Don't beat yourself up. Remember all my hashtags, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic, because we are not made of magic, we are made of practice. Hashtag, if your first 100 hands suck, you are right on track. Go practice, take a break, drink more coffee, practice some more, and I will see you in the next video.